The last time I had made any actual progress on this, it was firing, but it wasn't running. One of the biggest problems is that the ignition system simply couldn't keep up. It was just too slow. I think that I'm gonna have to look for an alternative. And how about this? A coil. But what difference does it actually really make? I mean, if your six-year-old son walked in and was like, Dad, what's the difference between a coil and a capacitor? What would you say? Well, how about... Well, son, it's actually just a lot like washing a car. This is my car, and it is pretty dirty. It's picked up thousands of kilometers worth of dirt and grime from our great Canadian highways. The first step in washing a car is to rinse off all of the large dirt particles. Since we're not calling for rain in the next couple minutes, let's just use a garden hose. Now because the water coming from the hose is useless in its current state, I'm going to give you two options. Option A. To make better use of the water coming directly from the hose, let's just use a bucket. Dear God. There's more. No. By filling a bucket with water, you now have a large quantity of water that you can displace in a short amount of time. The process is simple as you can imagine. Just fill a bucket up, throw it onto the car, fill it up again, and then repeat. Though, you do spend a lot of time just filling the bucket and not actually throwing water. Option B. Now, unless you've never had a childhood, I'm sure you can recall doing this. By placing my thumb near the end of the hose, I'm able to create a jet. This jet moves less water through, however, it's moving it faster. If we switch our thumbs from using a garden adapter, we have a nozzle now. The bucket can displace a lot more water than what the nozzle can at a given instant. However, the nozzle provides a constant stream of water, unlike the bucket. We can make more efficient use of this stream of water, because to be honest, we really don't need all of the water at once that the bucket provides. Why am I making you watch me wash my car? Well, it's actually kind of interesting. If you replace the hose with a battery, the bucket with a capacitor, and the nozzle with a coil, we actually have kind of an analogy for this whole system. The goal, instead of washing the car, is to instantly create spark. Capacitors work by charging up first, then discharging. Think of the bucket filling. At higher engine speeds, the capacitor isn't charging up enough to discharge. The coil converts the high current and low voltage of the battery to a very high voltage and a low current. The same way that the nozzle is converting the flow of water. So to put it plainly, the capacitor doesn't work because it takes too long to fill up. The coil works, however, because it's instantly converting the electricity to what we need. Now observe what happens when I touch these two leads together. Nothing. Now watch when I pull them apart. Contact brake ignition systems work counterintuitively to what you might think. It acts as a switch where a rotating camshaft periodically breaks the circuit. Therefore, the spark timing is determined when the camshaft breaks the connection, not making it. Yet it's not very complicated, is it? This little box does exactly that. Essentially, it acts as a switch. And yet, it doesn't do anything. Strange, right? It just was working a minute ago, but this one doesn't. But if we look closer, we can see something really interesting. There isn't a load on the circuit before it's broken, and even after it's broken. Thus, all the current doesn't have anywhere to go, so it goes back in between the two leads. This is why you're seeing those large sparks. Think of a blow-off valve in a turbo setup. When you let your foot off the gas after building up a lot of boost, that air has to go somewhere. Blow-off valves allow the air to go out of the system without having to go back through the turbo. In this case, the current doesn't have anywhere else to go, therefore it's just going back through the two leads, creating that arc. Now, there is like a million ways to solve this problem. Uh, some of them are using capacitors, which I have tried myself. Given that I'm not very versed in electricity, I decided to take another approach. We observed that the alligator clips are working just fine. What's stopping me from just using them then? I honestly couldn't tell you why the alligator clips work. Uh, they, they just do. Maybe it's because the surfaces are really flat or maybe they're coated in something. We need this to work fast because that's the problem that we've been having. So how fast does it work exactly? Because of how long it's been, all of the PLA components have actually disintegrated since I've last used them. So I'm going to remake everything out of PTG. PTG is a lot more heat resistant than PLA is, so it should work just fine for application. Now compression isn't an issue since we've already figured that one out. Instead of using hot glue to keep the O-rings down, I'm going to use silicone instead. A quick compression test proves that this works. Oh yeah, one more thing. The flywheel we were using before was way too light. 
I'm going to remake a new one. The new flywheel not only has more weight on it, it's also a larger diameter. The new flywheel has enough momentum to carry through the compression stroke. Now we got a flywheel that actually has some balls. Before I go and mount the engine to the veritable block of wood, I'm going to grease up some of these parts. You'll see why this is important. So this is the block that I'm going to be screwing the uh, engine block into. Uh, as you can see, it's the same one from before because of all the uh, oil leakage. Mounting the engine isn't that interesting. Uh, hammer this, screw that, you know, you get the idea. Since it's all wired up, we're ready for the first test. Now the battery was getting rather warm, though it looked like it worked just fine, it was keeping up spark and it was doing it really quickly. But more importantly, will it turn the engine over if we give it some fuel? I thought there was something wrong with the ignition, but you can still hear that it's there. Later in the testing, I was pretty sure that we had lost the ignition. Now it has spark, but it just isn't doing anything. Maybe the spark's not strong enough? Oh my f- So the spark is fine. I'm completely lost at this point. I honestly couldn't tell you what was going wrong with this. What I do know is that the battery is getting rather warm. This might be due to the fact that the system that I made is normally closed, which means it's just shorting out. This leads me to think that I have one last trick. Observe that the camshaft breaks the contact between the two points. Nothing special. Because the instant it's connected and disconnected, it creates a spark, what if we inverted the camshaft? By inverting the camshaft, the system will be open, and then it will close, and then it will open again. This means that for a much longer duration, the system is actually opened, and not creating a short circuit. I'm putting on the new contact breaker before trying this for the last time. I lost the thing that I was putting on it last time. Uh, I actually don't know where I put it. I'm just gonna put a drill, like, directly to it, I suppose. Perfect. I'm gonna put this on because I actually feel like this is a bomb. This is actually a bomb. Like, this is literally going to explode. Ah, uh, just kidding, Mr. Government. Uh, if this blows up and I die, like, comment, subscribe, share with all of your friends, everybody. After only a few minutes of testing, we were running into problems again. Where'd the spark go? What the hell? That is so weird. It just stops for some reason. Part of me thinks it's a battery. This is literally every battery that I own. Uh, I'm going to test all of them. Oh! Ooh! It did a thing! You saw that. That, it worked, you saw that. Now after it fired a few times, the crankshaft felt a little looser. That was a fire, that actually was. Oh, oh my god, it ripped the crank apart. I think that's our first catastrophic failure. Uh, it was firing, and then I noticed it fired, but it felt really weird, like it felt really weak. And it split the, the crank in two. Wow, holy shit. Now I'm pretty sure it was because I didn't print this with 100% infill, which is what I printed the last ones with. So it twisted the crank when it fired and surprisingly you actually snapped it. Um, overall, I think this has been a pretty good success. I mean, we have an ignition system that actually works, uh, mostly. We have a heavier flywheel. We have compression, that's not a problem. But the last thing we need to do is figure out our fuel problem. 
This is going to conclude the third part of this video series where we first overcome the engine's design, the compression of the engine, and finally we've concluded that we have an ignition system. The last thing I can really think of to come up with is just the fuel system. Uh, I still have a lot of ideas for what I should do, and if you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read them. Anyways, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. I mean, there's been, like, so much support on this series that I've honestly, like, it's probably the only reason I'm still doing it. If there wasn't any of you guys leaving comments or anything like that saying that I should keep doing it or giving me ideas on, like, what to do, I 100% would have just stopped right after the first part, because even after the first part when it was literally nothing... Uh, there were still so many comments, like, hoping that it would become something bigger, which it... Anyways, that concludes this video. Uh, if you do enjoy it, please check out some of my other ones. I'm sure you'll find them just as interesting. Anyways, that's it for today, so see ya. Ooh!